we we just do it all here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Insight on Business. My name is Michael Libby. Thanks so very much for joining us. 31 minutes now past the top of the hour. We're talking with a couple of guys from the 515 Brewery. And uh, this is Bailey Forrest and also Dave Rupti. And uh, talking about the backstory, if you will, uh, about this brand new brew pub, craft brewing place uh, here in Des Moines. And I want to give you a taste of what it's like on the inside. Uh, they've had a couple of soft openings. And what we did is we went in and filmed uh, just a you know, very few short, about a minute and a half of uh, some people and what's going on and what the interior looks like. And these are all soft openings. We'll ask about soft openings in just a minute. But let's take a look at that tape, Ryan. Ryan Northfield in our production studio. Uh, Going to show you a, a bit of a YouTube video about the 515 Brewing Company's soft opening. Ryan? It's a soft opening. Let's see what's going on inside. And this is the inside. You like this? They call this a soft opening. It's a beer wench. So this is the stuff that makes the stuff that the people drink. Oh. I'm, I'm kind of thinking like a milk parlor. <laughs> really? All right, go ahead and figure out what the stainless steel cost is. Wow. That's bad. So what is that? when you're not at an Iowa brew pub? Usually Big Club Ultra. Okay. So this is kind of different. Yeah, it is different. Coming back? I will come back. There you go, kids. Uh, unsolicited testimonial. But, boy, I like this stuff, you know? I, I was a little surprised. I, I, you know, people that they, I mean, I'm a Coors Light girl, she said. And I said, do you like it? She said, yeah. And the other, you know, is Michelob Ultra or something like that? And she says, yeah, I'll be back. We have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Rupti and Bailey Forrest with us from the 515 Brewing Company. Uh, so why, Dave, have soft openings? What's the point of that? Yeah, well, the big reason is we've never run a tap room before, <laughs> and we have no idea what we're doing. That's really the long and short of it. Um, so because of that, instead of opening the doors and having a big, giant, grand opening and getting slammed and making giant asses of ourselves, we decided that we're going to have the soft opening, and we're going to kind of go into it slowly um, and see how our cash register works and how we process credit cards and how fast we can wash dishes and you know how good the beer really is. So do we have enough glasses? Do we have enough glasses? <laughs> yes. Are, are we making horrible, horrible mistakes? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Should we move now? <laughs> yes. It's much like giving the speech in front of your wife and, and family as opposed to doing it in front of yeah, the whole I, world. Yeah. So although as a soft opening, you had a lot of people there. <laughs> yeah, I was really surprised um, the, the reaction we had. We the first night we didn't really announce it at all, just friends, family, coworkers. Mm -hmm. um, so it was word of mouth only. Uh, the second night we opened last, well, not last Saturday, we can we could go Saturday. Uh, we announced it at noon on Facebook and Twitter that we were going to be open at four, and we were um, very busy all, all night long. So yeah, it's been it's been good with, with no advertising at all, all except yeah, for that's, see, that's the media. next thing, and and we've seen this time and time and time again. And kids, listen up, okay? If you're into business, I don't care what the business is. Listen, 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 listen to what I'm about to tell you. We have seen numerous examples of successful business launches using absolutely zero dollars in traditional advertising. No radio, no television, uh, simply utilizing um, new media or social media 
to drive that business. And we've seen this happen dozens of times. Um, what, what's the good news? And people think it's free, <laughs> but, but it's not necessarily free, is it, Bailey? Not entirely. I mean, we have to do some sort of promotions every once in a while. We've got to, I mean, our couple of soft openings, we have, we've got to give out samples. We've got to give out product that, you know, otherwise would be paid for. But, right. I mean, the big thing is get people in the door and get them to taste the beer. And we, we feel that the beer is going to speak for itself and people are going to enjoy it and be back just like you saw in the video. Yeah, yeah. So what on this whole side of social media, utilizing sure. that venue mm -hmm. to broadcast, if you have Facebook, Twitter, whatever else uh, that you've been using, and I'm not sure if there's anything else that you are using. We, we started using Vine a little bit. And, a little bit of Vine, a little six-second bat. A little six-second bat video. Yeah, we, we're on Vine, or I'm on Vine. I'm not sure the brewery is quite yet. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, we mostly like the Facebook and Twitter, um, yeah. and, and kind of our thing. In, in, in the craft brewing industry in general, there's kind of the hardcore craft beer fans that will find you, oh, yeah. uh, instead of you trying to find them. And we've been, you know, very successful, successful obviously with those guys. But uh, you know, we had a couple things we kind of lever. We we made values of ours that we weren't going to go ahead and make a big push until we knew we were ready to open because we didn't want to lose the buzz. And we've done, sure. I think, a pretty good job of capturing that. Um, but also having that direct social interaction with our customers or potential customers via social media is huge for us, you know, actually talking to people Absolutely. on a one-to-one -one basis as a company to a individual, we think is important. Rather than, rather than just being a one-way push to something, it's absolutely. a two-way conversation. Absolutely. I, absolutely, yeah. And you're what, how many away from a thousand? On seven. We're seven. 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 If we get seven more likes today, we'll have a thousand likes on Facebook. Bam. I think that we make money automatically when we get to a thousand <laughs> likes on Facebook. So. <laughs> Excited about that. Excited Check about money. kids <laughs> on Facebook, 515 Brewing Company. In the video, we saw got to be thousands of dollars worth of stainless steel. I mean, I, I, of course, farm, I think of milk parlors. You know, cinnamon sure. thought that was a big hoot when I said something about <laughs> well, that's what it looks like to me. Um, yeah, round numbers? What kind of dollars are we talking for all this kind of stuff? I'll put that off to you, Dave. You were working on the financials the other day. Yeah, yeah. We have, you know, grand total. Um, and we did it about as cheap as I think you can do a three barrel system. And we have about a three, ba three barrels. Beer's been usually measured in barrels of about 100 and uh, a barrel is 31 gallons. So we have a, we can do about 100 gallons uh, per batch. Um, we got maybe twenty five to thirty thousand dollars wrapped up in in, in stainless steel, um, which is in the grand scheme of things not all that much money. Uh, and you know we have a lot of other money wrapped up in construction in the building and just doing the, sure. the, the simple things. We had to put a grease trap in, which was expensive. Oh, that was a big deal, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a big deal. Um, Even though you don't sell. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> but, uh, I was going to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, and we have, you know, lots of other little bits and pieces. The stainless sure. steel, the big, the fermenters in the, in the brew house are the most obvious examples of that. But there's lots of fittings and pumps and valves. How and many, how, how much beer can you make in a month? Well, that's a good question. We haven't really tried to push the limits. Theoretically, we can do probably about what, 20. Four batches. Well, we do about nine batches a month. If we, nine batches. That's depends right. on the beer, but we can do yeah. about nine batches of beer a month, and that would be really. I mean, we'd be pushing working, it, huh? pushing it. Yeah. Um, probably closer. What's to a batch four. of beer? A batch of beer is about a hundred and hundred gallons or so for us. So oh, that's enough. About nine hundred <laughs> gallons. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be surprised how fast it goes. Well, I, I, um, I just have a comment on um, uh, Twitter. Uh, love the Num Nuts beer. Yes. Is that is that pretty popular? It has been. Yeah. I mean, one of the guys in the video was drinking mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And uh, we've only got four, so it's got four our, beers of ours. Yeah, we got okay. Tell us about those. What are they? Sure. Yeah, we have um, right now. We have four on tap. We <laughs> I've done this like a thousand times the last few days. It seems uh, we have a uh, the numb nut, which is what he's talking about. It's a spice brown ale um, with cinnamon and allspice as it, as the main spices in it. We have a uh, Berliner Weiss style beer we call Little Tart, which is uh, low alcohol. I tried that. Yeah, it's it's got a little bit of tartness to it. Um, the lactic acid uh, kind of adds to that. Um, then we have uh, two IPAs, one we call Weed IPA, which is a, uh, a wheat beer, um, but it's hopped like an IPA. But it's not like the bitter hop. It's kind of more of a, a citrusy hop. We call it, what we call it OG IPA. Then we have a West Coast IPA, which is more of that traditional higher alcohol, stronger malt bill, so it's got more body. And then it's bitter, bitter-ish hops and then a lot of flavor and aroma hops in there, too. So it's a, it's a more flavorful big beer. Are all, Bailey, all kinds of stuff going? Are, are there? What makes it bitter? Is it the amount of hops? It's the amount of hops and the time that you add it and the, the characteristics of it. Um, most of the bitterness comes from the hops that you add early on when the, when the wort's boiling. Um, it pulls out all the alpha acids and then 
later. Alpha you, acids. Yeah. <laughs> chemistry <laughs> class. I've been absolutely amazed at the amount of stuff that I realized I forgot from chemistry class in high school. It's been incredible. <laughs> Good for you. 515 Brewing Company, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to Bailey and to Dave for coming in and spending some time with us today talking about a little bit of the backstory. If you're interested in communicating with them directly, it is at 515 Brewing. That's at 515 Brewing on Twitter. Or find them on Facebook. And I can tell you that they are very... Um, conversational. <laughs> I mean, I was impressed. Uh, the day that we went down there to the soft opening and did that video, we pushed out just to think, hey, we're coming down there. And bam, within five minutes, somebody was back at us saying, hey, welcome to the brewery. That'd be all Dave. Dave's been you? doing yeah, a great job I mean, on social I mean, media. A social feed, so. Yeah, very nice. Nice work. You know, it's one of the things that we just have a hard time with. Some companies that don't do that, sure. you know, and, and it is the real secret in the whole conversation. Secret sauce. Yeah, it is. Don't, don't give it away. <laughs> <laughs> 515 Brewing Company. We'll be back with a wrap-up right after this. This is Insight on Business, powered by Webcast One Live.